DxO just announced Photo Lab 9. And what we're gonna do is just take a look at the information. Now, if this is something that you are considering picking up, then of course I have affiliate links and a coupon code down in the description box for you. So if you wanna help support this channel, then please consider using those items. With that being said, let's talk about Photo Lab 9. So, uh, Photo Lab 9, it says in the press release, it introduces a new era of editing, adding exceptional AI masks, high precision local adjustments for deep prime denoising and sharpening and more. Some of the new features include powerful battery naming, a host of improvements for a smoother workflow and support for Apple HEIC or HEIF and Pro Raw files. Now there's a quote in the press release from Jean Mark Alexia, who is the VP of product strategy. And he says, version nine is a major step forward in raw photo editing. The AI powered masking offers unmatched accuracy. And when you combine this with all the other features in Photolab 9, it's probably our biggest upgrade to our flagship editing software of the last 20 years. So this is going to be a really large upgrade to the DxO Photolab suite or tools, which if you're not familiar, Photolab is kind of, it's like the hub because you can plug in or it integrates very well, I should say, with the DxO film pack, the Nick collection, pretty much all of the software that DxO sells. All the programs are great on their own, but Photolab is going to be improved dramatically or drastically with the version nine release. Now, Introducing DxO AI masks is the next aspect of the press release. This is a new standard for automatic object selection. And we're seeing this as a very common thread with photography software right now. AI masking is here to stay. It's helpful and, you know, we're not going to get away from it. So with this, we're seeing DxO kind of step into that AI world where they're using actual masking technology. And I kind of griped that Photolab 8 didn't have the AI tools as I was working through it. But now seeing that Photolab 9 is going to have these AI tools, here's what it says. It says users can quickly create masks through three different methods, hovering and clicking on different parts of the photo, drawing a box around the area of an image that contains the object to be selected, or choosing from various subject types, a list of predefined objects, including sky, people, faces, and hair. So essentially this is going to be the AI masking that we're already used to, but it's going to break down where you can select the people, faces, and hair, which some programs don't allow for that. So it's nice to see that DxO is going to add in a little bit more refinement. So I'm excited for what's to come with that. And then combining DxO AI mask and viewpoint technology to achieve unmatched precision is the next headline here. And this is uh, essentially selections can be refined using DxO's renowned viewpoint technology using a combination of AI mask, control points, control lines, graduated filters, and the brush tool, photographers can create highly complex masks that would otherwise be too sophisticated for even the most advanced AI. Here's what I think is really cool, and I, I love that DxO is doing this. They're taking AI and they're allowing you to combine it with the tools that you're already familiar with. So if you are a longtime user of the Photo Lab suite or just Nick Collection in general or DxO software with the U-Point technology, you're going to be able to take AI and the U-Point technology and combine them together when you start to create your selections. And I think that that is the way that I want to see AI moving forward uh, with photo editing software. 
I don't want the AI to do everything. I want the AI to be able to do some of the more intricate things, but then if I want to refine it with my own masking technology or my own masking understanding, I want to be able to use what is found inside of uh, the software initially because that's a more familiar workflow. So I'm excited to see that we're going to be able to combine the U-Point technology, which I will be the first to admit I'm not the greatest at using, but it's nice to know that DxO is looking at this and saying, what is what's familiar to our user base and how do we provide them something that is going to be elevated, but still very similar and familiar because part of change is making it as comfortable for the users as possible. And so I like the way that they're integrating the U-Point technology with uh, their AI masking. So they're not saying, hey, we're going to throw away our U-Point technology and only focus on AI masking. So super excited for that. Uh, the next headline here is exceptional control with local adjustments for targeted noise reduction and lens sharpness optimization. One of the things that you were not able to do in previous versions of Photolab is when you worked inside of the local adjustment section, you couldn't actually mask in the noise. And this is actually becoming a more popular editing technique that I'm witnessing where people don't mind having grain. And I think this goes back to the idea of like retro images. We like retro style images. So people are okay with having grain or noise in their image, but there are certain areas where they would like less noise or no noise at all. And so that's where we're starting to see people say, well, I want to mask in my noise reduction software. We've seen this come out with other programs like uh, Topaz Photo AI, where you are able to kind of select where the AI tool was applying the adjustments. And now we're seeing this with the DxO Photo Lab. So for long-term users that have been waiting for that feature to catch up, well, now it is here. There's this new idea of a smaster, a smaster. <laughs> There's a new idea of a smarter, faster workflow that's being implemented with Photo Lab 9. And one of the things here is it's coming out with new features that include image stacking, a favorite system for folders and projects, and direct access to the project palette from customized mode, which Previously, you weren't able to get to the project palette, which if you are working in projects, which for those of you who aren't familiar, projects are similar to what other programs would call an album, or I believe Lightroom calls a collection. It's the exact same idea and concept, but you weren't able to get to those from the customized mode, which is the edit module, if you will, for Photo Lab. All right. Think customized mode, edit module, project project album. All right. Because you couldn't get to that, it was a little bit cumbersome trying to work with projects. I know that I've experienced that personally. Um, so I just went ahead and stopped working in projects altogether because sometimes you want to just jump to the next image that's in line uh, for what's inside of your project or your album. So just food for thought. I'm, I'm excited to see that that's coming, but uh, the stacking and the favorites system for folders and projects, I'm excited for that as well. Uh, but I think the big takeaway, at least for my own workflow, is having the access to the projects while I'm editing my image. Now, the next section on the uh, press release is powerful batch renaming. And I won't spend a lot of time, but being able to rename batch images or rename your images in batch is always a huge win for an organization standpoint. I know a lot of people, they frown or they think like, I don't need organizational tools inside of my digital asset manager or uh, inside of my photo editor. But for people who understand organization and the importance of organization, this is a huge win for the users of Photolab 9. I can't stress enough that we need to be able to do batch renaming. Um, and for this one, it says file names can be automatically generated using image metadata 
XF information or custom text, streamlining organization and post processing. That's a that's a big deal, right? We've seen this inside of programs like Capture One. Uh, On One allows you to use tokens, so that's the same idea here. The point that I'm making is there's no more excuses. If you get Photo Lab Nine, there's no more excuses for not being organized with your photography because the tools are available to us, and that's a huge win. All right. Now, uh, the next tagline or headline here is support for iPhone images. I'm not an iPhone photographer. I went and took some photos with my iPhone. So I do look forward to testing this out with the version nine of Photo Lab just to see how well the raw files work from my whatever the iPhone is, it's the latest one. Um, So we'll see how that works. I don't know what what iPhone I have. I stopped paying attention to that. But the point is, if you are using your iPhone as a primary camera, or at least you have a bunch of iPhone photos, you'll now be able to uh, edit your images inside a photo lab with little to no issues, uh, assuming that this works out that way. So the next headline here is for all of my Fujifilm users, because you now have for those who have the X-Trans sensor, which is only found in Fujifilm cameras to the best of my knowledge, They have a new deep prime uh, XD3, I guess, technology built into the software. So that way you can denoise your images. I don't know enough about the X-Trans sensor, so I'm just going to skip over that. But I can only imagine that that's going to be a huge win for those who are using the Fujifilm camera with that sensor. Now, if Photolab 9 sounds like a solution for you, here's what I recommend. Download the 30 day free trial. There's a link down in the description box below. It is an affiliate link. So if you do happen to purchase through that particular link, I do make a commission, but it's at no extra charge to you. I greatly appreciate it. Now, if you are purchasing a new license for Photolab 9 and you want to save some money, I have a coupon code. Again, I do make a commission from that, but a new license for Photolab 9 is going to cost you $239.99. And then if you are upgrading from Photolab 7 or Photolab 8, it's going to cost you $119.99. And of course, based off of your country and the currency that you are purchasing in, it's going to change maybe a little bit. But those are the prices. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments about DxO Photolab down below. And if you are planning to get this software, if you got questions about the software, please let me know. As I get my hands on it, I will bring content to the channel, showcasing some of the new features that we talked about, especially that AI masking. And, you know, for those who are concerned about it, the batch renaming tool, I'll showcase that workflow. We'll just have a good time unpacking DxO Photo Lab 9. So with that, until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.